Hello, welcome back. It's Michael again. You will have seen in the previous episode that finally things started happening. We have now a bunch of people running around in our scenario. That's good. Um, and I know that you're keen to get on with things and make it more interesting. But I want to take out just a few minutes now to talk about improving the quality of our code before we go on adding more uh, functionality, which just makes our code messy and messy if we're not careful. Um, it is important to also look um, at the style and and the quality of our code. So I'll spend a few minutes talk about this uh, and talk about refactoring. Um, have a look what I mean. So we have seen that if I um, initialize this world, I can do that also by clicking the reset button. This is the random placement now of my 300 people. I can make them all appear in the world and I can make them all run around. Um, let's have a second look at the code that we have written here. Um, there are some slight improvements that we can make. So what I have done is in the constructor of the world I have um, specified the size of the world with the super call and I have created my um, objects. Now let's um, make this code a little bit nicer. When you write code you should not just get things done to behave the way you want. You also should write nice code. One thing is to write good comments. So first of all, I will write a brief comment. I say here, the world in which the people will move. Um, you should always write your name in there and you should always write a version number. So. Um, the next thing we want to do is um, create the world and populate it with people. Um, so that is one thing. Um, the next thing we want to do is we probably want to avoid hard coding numbers like the 300 here. So something like how many people I want in my simulation, that is very likely something that I might want to experiment with. And I want to see what it looks like with more people or fewer people. So that is something that I should not just, you know, integrate somewhere in the middle of my code where it is hard to find. But this, um, these constants that I'm using for my program, they should actually be defined as named constants at the beginning, because that way they are easier to see and easier to change later. So let's, let me transform this into a constant. I go up here, I say private um, static um, final. So private static final is a private constant and I this is an int and I call it um, number of people and I initialize it to 300. So if I do this, then I have the constant and I can copy the name and here instead of using the 300, I am using number of people. So I can here, um, first of all, when I read the code now, it becomes much clearer. If I say from zero to number of people, I now know exactly what this loop is doing. It is run. It runs once for every number of persons that I that I want. So it's not just a, a magic number, it's now uh, tells me what this number actually represents. And also here at the top, later when I want to experiment with them, it makes it easier to, to modify. So that's one style rule. Every time you have sort of arbitrary numbers in your code, typically if they are interesting numbers that you may want to play with, make them a named constant. The next thing you want to look at is that um, when you do an action, um, it is good to give the action a name. So here, this loop populates my world with the people. So instead of writing um, code that, that doesn't really tell the reader what it does directly here in the constructor, it is actually a nicer thing to pull that out into a method so that I can give it a name and make my constructor much easier readable. So I'm selecting this and cut it out. And then instead, I just say populate. Um, Oops, spelling error. I do that a lot. Um, so I just tell here the reader that I'm populating the world with all the actors in it. And of course, I don't have a populate method, so I have to write it. So I just say private void 
populate um, and create my method and here I just paste the code that I had before. Um, now I should write a comment. So I say populate the world with all the initial actors. Um, and this way um, my code actually is more extendable, more readable. When you have such a short class as this one, it is sometimes hard to uh, motivate why it is good practice to, to do these things, to use constants, to use separate methods. But you will see over the next few episodes of this um, video cast that our program will get larger and larger and larger and at some point we will be really happy that we have a nice structure because it will not so uh, not be so short and obvious anymore and having these named methods actually helps us. So what we've done today, we haven't added any functionality. The behavior of my program is the same as before. So what I've actually done is technically it's, it's called refactoring. Refactoring is making structural changes to my code, making improvements in my um, in, in the quality, the style, the structure of my code without changing the functionality. It is good to always continuously review your structure and refactor when you see something that could be better. Okay, now we've made our code a bit nicer. Um, that is good. Uh, that will pay off later. You will see that as our program gets bigger and bigger, um, paying attention to um, what's called in technical terms cohesion and coupling. That is, you know, writing methods that are short and to the point and take care of a single thing and keeping our methods readable will be incredibly important. But in the next episode, we get back to writing some more new functionality, I promise. See you next time.